devil dog fishing so we're back actually first video what i'm gonna do here today is i know i talked about how we're gonna kind of go through the process of how i got here but this has been a really weird um spring kind of uh end of the winter uh been really cold and wet for so long that this is something i kind of was thinking wanted to do and thought i would get this up and running earlier but man the weather the tournaments i thought i'd fish about four or five tournaments by now actually yesterday i uh fished my second one and it's the one series i really kind of have concentrated on there's i think there's a total of five tournaments and then the championship but the first one was canceled a couple weeks ago. It actually was rescheduled for like June 18th or something. But So yesterday was the first tournament for uh, American Bass Anglers. This was the Open Series. Uh, next weekend's another series. But what I learned from last year to this year, it, I really just worked on one thing in the off, really all winter long. Um, wacky rig. When I got back into fishing, this whole finesse thing was totally new to me. It was, it was, it was foreign, and I just, man, it. it last year I was out on the river one day, and when all the the grass came in, I was done. I was cooked. I, I really had nothing in my tackle box, and I'm like, holy cow! And it was kind of the first realization to me that. Even though when I go out fishing with my buddies, you know, on the Shenandoah or the local ponds or Fountainhead or, or Burke Lake, and it's different. It, it is just different. And it takes a lot more patience and it's a different technique at different times of the year. So yesterday, I actually had a really good showing. I felt good going in and I think I ended, I, there was, I think, a total of 46 boats, 28 co-anglers. Um, I'm still not, for this series, I'm not taking my boat out yet. Um, it's, I think, it, it's 105 bucks as a co-angler, and I think it's like 210 or 220 if, if you're a boater. Um, the boater has a five fish limit. The co-angler has a three fish limit. I don't want to take my boat out yet. I just for that type of tournament. Uh, there's reasons for, it, but that's the tournament that I did last year and that series and those guys in those areas. So this year I really wanted to focus on just kind of that tournament and making a good showing. And uh, I'm gonna move this back a little bit here. So what I did is uh, I focused on finesse all winter long. So yesterday we're out. And um, with the boater who, be, be quite frank, he's probably about as new as boater as I am. Um, and we're in one area and uh, he catches, we're out in the flats and he catches, he catches one off of a white spinnerbait. Cool. And I'm kind of in the morning and I had a goal going in. My goal was to fish two baits, stick with it, and just live or die by it. And then the first hour, I, I didn't even do that. I went from a buzz bait, actually I went from a spinner bait to a buzz bait, to a crank bait, to a Ned rig. Um, and then I did something else and then I just find, then we hit the docks and then we started hitting docks and I was like, that's it. I'm done. Wacky rig. Not good at it. I just started catching. I worked on it for like four or five months. Just started catching fish in April on it. And boom, I got, I got my first fish. Now, it's not a limit. It's about 12, 13 inches. Minimum size was 15 inches. So he catches one. No limit. Dark color, plastic, jig, slow. So now we got two slow techniques, and it's all on structure, docks. Um, and even the spinnerbait was on a log floating in you know log sitting there in the river hit the docks boom another one 
off a of wacky rig. So now we've got the clues now. Now we're like, okay, it's 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 slow finesse structure. So we're getting ready to move. And the one of the things that I noticed, because when I talked to great guy, nice guy, I'll, I, I'll keep his number. I'll, I'll continue fishing with him. But if you're going to finesse fish, you got to go slow. And he was moving pretty fast with that trolling motor. And we had some boat issues, which actually turned out in my favor. So we couldn't drive the boat. So we just had to cruise down the bank of the chick down back in the Matawan and, you know, back in the small wood. But along the bank, I get my first keeper, 15 inches. And uh, I was like, I just said funny. I was like, watch, this is totally not planned, but this is where we'll make our day and we'll catch the best fish right where we didn't expect to catch it. We keep going, and then all of a sudden, I think I got a snag, and it's not a snag, because it just starts bending my pole down, and big old white flash. So, we get it in. It, it, it's around a three, three and a half pound bass. Um, nice fish. So then, uh, he and he got one. He got his three pounder. And then it's getting close to the end of the day. And so we go, like I said, we, we, we can't go fast. So we go back in, we get into the marina. And I'm like, look, we got an hour. Let's just go slow. Let's pick this place apart. Yeah, I, he just doesn't know what slow is. So I had to kind of maneuver and cast to where my wacky rig was going to just kind of stay in a spot as long as I could. And we hit the marina and about four or five casts within the marina, boom, another three pound bass. So it's a three pound, it's three fish limit. That's the first time I've ever got my limit. Now that's like the sixth tournament I've ever fished. So I was pretty, pretty stoked. And I knew if you have three fish, as a co-angler in your three fish limit, you got a shot at winning, but I knew that 15 incher was gonna be the death of me. So I wanted to, by at this point, I, my body's hurting, my arthritis is killing my hands, and he's just moving so fast with the trolling motor. There was one more dock where I knew, I just thought if we could spend 10, 15 minutes in literally a 20 foot area, I might be able to call that one fish, but I, I was just like, you know what? Let's let's he let's get his boat in. This way, he can change his prop. He can do what he wants. So I go. We get in early, so we get the way in early. And a lot of people thought the scales were light. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I think it evens out. But I got my three fish at seven seven five, which actually was holding up in first place for a while. But then there was a group of co-anglers that I think, I think I ended up around 6th or 7th. Again, I think there was 46 boats, 28 co-anglers. So I haven't gotten the official results. I was kind of hanging out to kind of see where I was going to, if there was a possibility I could win some money. But once I was with some dudes and they said, yeah, 888, and I was just like, all right, I'm out of here. I got to drive an hour home. But I was really happy because at that point, the first hour, hour and a half, I was flipping baits, switching on and off. And then I was like, okay, if we're going to hit structure, I, I just decided I got to adjust my game to what he was doing. And if we're going to hit the flats, because there's not a, a lot of grass out there right now, I was switching it up, seeing what was going on. But nobody was catching anything in the flats. But as soon as we hit, as soon as I saw a log or... Or, or tree or anything I pulled out the wacky rig and that's all I stuck with all day long and I caught all my fish I caught more than three I think I caught six or seven all day long uh, I lost a couple um, which is really good because a lot of guys didn't even you know one fish or zero but uh, I got my I got my limit I uh, top 10 finish 
and I stuck with what I was going to do. And that's probably one of the things I see a lot of people do, is if you're going to commit to something, especially finesse fishing, finesse fishing is target fishing. You can't cover area. And when the water's cloudy, it's dirty. It's not like those fish see or hear it unless it drops right in front of their face. So that's why when you're doing docks and structure, this guy's casting, you know, 20, 30 feet, 40 feet out in front and boom, 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 real, real, boom, boom, boom. Real. And I'm like, and then he's speeding down. I'm like, that's not how you do it. I'll, I'll, I'll pick apart a 20 foot section and I'll spend a good 10, 15 minutes there and I'll boom, 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 I'll kill it. And that's exactly where I caught my fish is where he slowed down. We were dead stop and I was able to hit a few spots and that's where I got all my fish. So that was the ABA American Bass Anglers Open Series, May 13th on the Potomac, Smallwood, Maryland. Uh, Marbury, Maryland at Smallwood Park State State Park. Um, I really felt good going in. I had a good day. The, you know, I didn't deviate from what my plan was too much. So this tournament is probably, you know, it, it's a good sized tournament. If, if you haven't done tournaments and you have a boat, it's probably, not, and it's a first tournament, probably not what I would do is the first tournament, but Here's the beautiful thing about being a co-angler is I get to learn the river. I get to learn spots. A lot of these guys that are anglers, that are boaters, that I have fished with, I've learned something from um, because they're better than me and I've learned techniques. Um, but then there's some guys where I'm like, dude, I'm not doing that and I'm not doing that and I don't and I'm more successful. So you could learn things both ways. Um, it's a great series to get into as a co-angler. Like I said, I think I think it's 105 bucks as a co-angler. If you want to do the big fish side pot, meaning you know biggest fish for the tournament, you can win some money. Um, it pays out. So it pays out for every top five. So for every five anglers, there's a payout. They had, I think there was five payouts. I think, like I said, I think I ended up sixth or seventh. I didn't stick around. I'll post the uh, official results when they post them um, on Facebook and so forth. But the American Bass Anglers Open Series, 13th of May, top 10 finish, not bad. Got a few more. That's how I did. What we'll do on the next video is I'll just kind of take you a background of actually how I got into the ABA and some of the other series that's going on. Because if you do want to get to, you know, if you're younger and you want to get to the Elite Series or BFLs, this is a great way to start because the further you all, you do go up, it's basically the same. Once you learn this, then everything else is really easy. And I will, my, my, my goal one day is to fish a Bassmaster Open, which you can do that, at, you know, as a co-angler. It's, you got to fish those to make it to the elite, blah, 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 just to do it. I'll probably get my tail kicked, but it's, 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 it's just a bucket thing. But where I've come from, from last year to where I am this year, my goal this year is really is I would love to finish I'd love to win one tournament. I didn't even expect that this year, but with the showing yesterday um, and kind of understanding and really learning the Potomac and the areas, because everybody fishes the same spots in these tournaments. It's nuts. Um, I've really been able to home in. Uh, I practice on my own boat. I'll go on my boat and I'll hit those same spots. And it's kind of cool to see the, prog the progression from last year to this year. So that's where we're at. ABA, May 13th, top 10 finish. I'll have more exactly where I finished for you. But that's devil dog fishing. Semper Fi, do or die. Oorah!